Alright, shalom y'all. We up uh, early in the morning, crack of dawning. We heading up to the hub. We got, uh, we're going to be doing some training. Uh, we are uh, going to be doing some work. We'll be uh, running some data cabling, training the brothers on that. Uh, we're going to be doing some auto repair work. And um, like I said, we're going to be doing some weapons training too. So we're going to have a, a pretty um, pretty involved day today. So, And you get to tag along. And we might even get to talk to Pastor today. So, so I, we are up here at the land. You see uh, Brother Martez, he's getting the toolbox. And what we are doing is we're going to be pulling the engine on this van here. Uh, as you can see, we've already started, got a lot done. See Martez walking up with the tools. And uh, that's, that is what we're gonna begin working today. And as you see over here, we got the other brothers. They're gonna be doing some data cabling. So you see them getting all the equipment together, getting their tools ready. And um, they're going to be heading down there to Pastor's house. Uh, and they're going to be wiring it up. And uh, they're going to be doing, we're gonna be doing a, uh, our telecom thing of networking. So we've got about three crews working today. And we're going to get after it. So we are heading up here. We're heading to the house. Um, the, brother, the brother's already over there working. Um, I just gotta go get a tool from them, so I'll just show y'all what we got going on while I'm in there. All right. So, um, right here, this group of cables are the ones we ran like a backbone down there. And um, the orange is fiber optic, uh, the black is data. So, and we run it all throughout the house in different places, so. Brother Martez, tell them what you what you just did and what you're getting ready to do. Bless y'all. So I basically just took off these mountain bolts right here. I put in a bag to separate it so we know what to put back later. And then we have the fan and the water pump right here. So we just took the whole assembly off because, you know, save time. And now we're about to go ahead. Put it, put it, put it over there on some wood. So what we do, whenever we're pulling stuff off, we never set it on the mounting surface. So what I would do is set it on, on this, like that, yep. There you go. So what, and like I said, what he pulled off is the, yeah, that's good right there. What he pulled off is the, um, that's the water pump and, and the fan. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and try my best to just connect the alternator. Uh, Connector from the harness and also the ground and plug at the back. So, so he's gonna he's gonna take that off and then he's gonna um, he's gonna remove this whole assembly. I'm I'm on the inside. I'm trying to disconnect all this stuff. And Marta, talk a little bit about what you do career wise and and what you do, you know, your mindset. So career wise, right now I'm start. As you guys know, I started at Toyota the dealership. I started off at an entry level loop technician spot so right now I'm just making my reputation known working hard trying my best to get in the workplace politics get to know my co-workers and see their mindsets and try my best to have that learning spirit a teachable spirit and an excellent spirit so I'm able to move up to be able to work on more bigger jobs, replacing tires or engine jobs, transmission jobs, anything as such. Um, how, 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 how have you been being helped in being a part of this assembly? I've been getting help because a lot of what we're doing in this assembly really teaches me how to lock in to a job. 
job site and how to have a good work ethic, which translates a lot over time. We're a workplace environment as well as these side jobs working with automotive gets me more hands-on experience since I won't have anything like this just living out there in the world. So this is a very hands-on experience to say my hands do it and I'm getting much memory. Right, the De- developing the, the mechanical ability or whatever. Yes, sir. All right, all right, I'll let you get back to it. So, and so he, he's one of the brothers here. Like I said, we, we do um, in our assembly here, as y'all see, and y'all gonna see as, as you watch this video, we do a we're very hands on. Um, we do mechanical work, a lot of uh, data cabling stuff, technical stuff. Of course, you know, we do broadcast. So, um, the brothers that come to this assembly and they apply themselves really develop and learn a lot. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot to be gathered here. You just have to have, like you heard Brother Martez say, you have to have a teachable spirit. Hey, Pastor, you, you said you had uh, something you wanted to show me in the house? Answer me as far as the data goes. We do. Hi, y'all. We here up at Pastor's house, and we're here with Pastor. And uh, Pastor, if you could, um, you know, we're we're here helping you with your house. But just mm-hmm. talk about a little um, your house. It's a it's a pretty decent sized house. Talk a little bit about what went into you uh, designing the house this way and uh, while you're doing that, we can kind of just walk through it if you want. Sure, well, um, this particular home right here, you know, we've built many, many homes uh, throughout the ministry over the years, the last 26 years. We have built a lot of homes. And believe it or not, I am just literally getting to my home after 26 years of um, having communities building communities and um and, and this is i guess going to be uh, and i'm almost 60 years old i'm getting 60 years old you mm. know what I mean? and so myself and the brother almost everything that is done out here on the land we actually do 90 98 percent you've seen it yourself to work ourselves right right and so um i decided to design this particular home right here because i have an office in the place uh, i have a couple of guest rooms guest quarters because you know that we live so far out mm-hmm. that when people do come to the community mm-hmm. and, and to live, I mean to, to visit and stuff, we usually have either guest room or places that people can stay. If you understand, right, me. right. Now the reason why I made this home so big and stuff because you can never have enough space. Um, myself, again, I'm gonna reiterate it again. Uh, myself and the brother have literally physically done all this heavy lifting on this, and not only that. Uh, not only just us here at Straightway, Tennessee, but I had some brother in come from Straightway, Wisconsin uh, that actually uh, are professional builders up there, and they actually come down here and help us frame up this roof. Right. Uh, which is, it, it was extraordinary, if you understand what I mean. They right. literally helped us frame this roof up. Um, and right now, I even have y'all here at Straightway. Right. Um, Nashville, mm-hmm. have y'all here? Y'all uh, helping r- wiring up the data uh, to make sure that we've got everything uh, working right as far as the broadcast go. Uh, any other type of communication that we need, right. um, y'all are running all that, including all the uh, the Wi-Fi lines and and um, you got. I mean, see, y'all got what RJ 42s in here, Cat 7 line, y'all running fiber and Cat 6. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and of course, you know our brothers here on the land, I'll keep saying that again, uh, they've done all the electrical work and everything. Now, the only thing that we did have to hire out because we just don't have a, anybody that's licensed for it um, is, is we had to have the HVAC work mm-hmm. hired out, if you understand mm-hmm. what I mean. Uh, but this home right here is, is pretty unique because it has a central boiler unit in it. Uh, that means there's a stove that's outside. Y'all can continue to keep working. Don't worry about that, all right? There's, there's a stove outside. Let's, let, let's go. Let's go check okay. it out. Yeah. And you can talk while This particular home right here has three zones in it. Three zones. Mm-hmm. And this particular unit right here is the central bowling unit. Mm-hmm. You can add wood inside of this thing. And I'm going to actually got the 
out here framing up this building, this house right here to enclose it. And um, you can see the pipes right here. It's got three different areas, or three different zones that are coming in. This is actually going to provide the hot water heater. It's going to actually heat the whole entire home from the floor. Um, and, 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 and that in itself is going to cut the electric bill way, way, way down. Right. The home's going to be extremely well insulated. Um, and again, here it is. Here's the blessing of, of the Most High right here. Is that throughout these years, when I first started some 26 years ago on this land, I've been able to accumulate a lot of knowledge. And then not only that, but the Most High has actually brought brother into the ministry that has some knowledge. Um, and I, like I said, when you turn around and you look at this is just one side of the house. You turn around and look at the back side of this house right here. You can tell, looking at this house right here, that it's actually going to be uh, an extraordinary house. What's good about this house is, is that everything that we're doing, we pay for it as we go. There will be no debt attached to this home, just like every other home that we've built out here. And, and of course, that's what the word says. You know, the blessing of Yah is rich and it has no sorrow. And it teaches us that the borrower is a servant to the lender. Now, this is a really nice home. Twin, a really nice home. There are people in the ministry that have seen my footprint and my footwork over the years. And they have actually um, think that Pastor Dow is deserving of it. The labor is worthy of his hire. Mm -hmm. But this is not just Pastor Dow sitting there watching a brother's work. We got many, many, plenty of videos for the last couple of years where you see me out here, blood, sweat, and tears, doing the concrete work, doing framing work alongside the brethren. And, um, I, and I, I, I was, I, I can testify because, you know, you you have some of these people they 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 come with these false claims. Um, I I was right down there in Alabama, and I watched them lay all them blocks for I don't know how many days we were out there Three days, solid. yeah and, and and look my body was talking to me you know what I'm saying I started getting in better shape and I mean you don't see that that type of uh leading from the front from a lot of these people that's out here just running their mouths talking I pass can you talk about and and then we're gonna we're gonna ride through straightway but can you talk about because I was listening to some people online talk about community mm -hmm. that, that's not doing it. Content creators talking about community. And uh, I guess theorizing what it takes to uh, lead and, and start and head up a community. Can you talk about the sacrifice it takes and what we're gonna do, we're also, he, he hasn't always lived like he's going to be living in this house. Um, but can you talk about the sacrifice it takes and it took to be the example that you've been out here with this community? Well, well you know, so I don't forget before, you know, uh -huh. I've got some poke salad going over there. Is that poke salad? Oh, so yeah. we need to make sure we get some poke salad. So we can make some poke and eggs. So <laughs> remind me of that, okay? <laughs> uh, before, we, you know, we get going because I don't want it to slip my mind. Uh -huh. Now, uh, building other communities. Um, when we first started this, uh, I had like Teacher Shane, um, and then Elder Doug came in a few years ago. I had mm -hmm. uh, uh, Deacon Bell, mm -hmm. um, them so the nucleus solid core brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, I had brother with me that is unwaverable, committed, mm -hmm. committed. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, loyal. Uh, I gave them the vision, what y'all showed me, and because you know the book says, "Without a vision, the people perish." And now you're looking at the vision coming to pass. Mm -hmm. uh, out there on the internet, uh, I understand that they use terms like um, the Hebrew community out there, but it's all abstract. It's not really a community. It's not. You know, when you scan this 101 acres of land, you see in a community. Oh, yeah. Because you, you can tangibly put your hands Back. on homes. You can yeah. tangibly put your hands and see livestock. Yeah. You can see the, the cows, the chickens, and the goats. And the, there's a pond down there yeah. stocked with fish and stuff. You understand I me? Mean, there are people that literally live here on this community in common unity. You can see the schoolhouse. You can see the, the assembly building. You can see the fellowship hall. You, you can see the guest homes. Right. You can see all the homes. This is what a community is. A community is not people on social media or on YouTube divided, bumping their gums talking about the Hebrew community when there's nothing there. Jeremiah said in the 29th chapter 
that when you're in Babylon and in captivity, he said, you build you houses and plant you gardens and dwell in those homes. That's what he clearly said. So when you get over to the book of Acts, you see that after the death, burial, and resurrection of Messiah, uh, we're still on the Roman occupation. And so the Most High definitely gave, Yahshua gave the apostles the instructions of the way that we should be living while in captivity. And that's where you'll see that all believe were together and had all things common. Mm. That's where I got it from from the very beginning. And and so I started implementing this. And the first thing I did was I started to get out there working and I saved money over like three years. Um, and I had, instead of taking the offerings that would come in and spend it on myself, I would just put it in the pot and continue to keep working. Mm -hmm. One time I worked three jobs. And then I got down to two, and then I found another job where I could actually, I had a route and I built it up, and I was making more money on that, but I worked a lot than I was on the three jobs, right? And so what I did was I took all that money and I bought our first, purchased our first piece of land, mm -hmm. which was 14 acres. And straightway was like that for a while. And, um, and so I learned how to build. And the way I learned how to build was, is that when I would be out getting building materials, or I'd be out be getting products or getting, uh, food for livestock or whatever it is, I would see people uh, that would be framing up a house. I didn't have any idea what to do to frame a house, so I would stop and I would ask them, can I work for y'all? All right? And when I say, can I work for y'all, uh, they say, we're not hiring. I said, I don't want to hire. I just want to be able to work. Just let me uh, allow right. me to assist y'all. That's right. all I did. Well, just allow right. me to assist y'all, right? I'm trying to keep it so you can see me for it. Oh, okay. All right, so I said, allow, allow me to assist y'all. Okay? And they said, sure. And so I would call home. I would tell Mother Carol, I'd say, listen, I'm not going to be home. Just put my dinner up. I'm going to be out here framing with these guys all day long so I can learn how to frame. Mm. Um, I, I would go to different places, and I was actually see these people uh, doing concrete work. And I would do the same thing, volunteer again. I would buy books. I would read books. I would study these books. And I, I, I can tell you one thing. I probably made more mistakes than anybody's ever had. But... Uh, those mistakes turn into successes. Mm. Successful. You know, being extremely successful. Now, not only am I a block mason, but I can do foundations. I can do um, uh, run heavy equipment, square, frame a building. You understand what I mean? And 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 the thing is, because again, I I was listening to these people profess to be wise. I guess online they make mm -hmm. videos, and what they were saying it takes to. Uh, to, to build a community. Oh, you got to go find people who know how to do all this. No, you don't. And no, you don't. can you, you can you, you have to what? You have a willing mind. And not only have that's what I'm mind. talking about. Talk about the tenacity and, and, and the mindset it takes, because like a lot of these people we see trying to bump their gums against straightway and what, what you're doing here and what we have going on. A lot of them, we can just visually discern the feminine nature on them, the weakness on them, and talk about the type of man it takes to uh, to lead a community, to, to head it up. Well, you gotta have self-driving determination, and, and it's not for the faint at heart. It mm -hmm. definitely ain't the faint at heart, because it's long hours, and it's hard work, extremely hard work, and you can't be sensitive and feminine and stuff in order to get this type of work done. But what's really missing in the Hebrew community more than anything, because we are a nation that consistent throughout our history, we have rebellion, just, just rebellion mm. throughout our history. And it's amazing. You can go to a job and submit to it. And, and no matter what the supervisor or the manager says, you will do it because you're getting a paycheck. Or you go to the military. You can learn there and be told what to do. No matter what profession you may be in, being told what to do. But all of a sudden, when it comes time for somebody to, to actually lead the charge, to show you what you need, need to do in order to develop these communities right here, nobody wants to submit to each other because everybody wants to be the chief and nobody wants to be the end. That, that ain't the way it works, though. The most I even set up an order, even in the assembly. He gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. All right? For the perfecting of the saints. All right? All right? For the edifying of the body until we all come into the unity of the faith. But you have got to have leadership. If you don't have leadership, you're gonna have disarray, discord, and dissension, and division, and you ain't gonna never get anything done. So talk about, cause again, I, I, I was, unfortunately, I gotta suffer through some of these silly ass videos that these people are putting out, okay? And I heard one individual say, 
we need to, he said, we need to separate the Bible from community. We got to just do the community because everybody want to come with all this stuff. Talk, talk about how important it is, the word. Talk about how important y'all's word has been when it comes to this community and the success of straight work. Well, the book says that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of Yah. So you cannot do these communities. You cannot live in this common community and do it without the word. The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Right. And so when you get out here, you understood what it meant when, when uh, Jesus was a carpenter and Paul was a tent maker. You begin to understand what, what they, when they, you know, when they put their hands to something, then you watch it come off the pages of the book. You can't do this separate from Yah. And, and all you go, again, if you do that, you're, you're going to have dissension, division, and discord, and there's no unity in this. You can't. Let me tell you something, Mike. Usually people that start communities. I had, actually, I had actually Pastor Joe Fox tell me this. He did his research. Um, he said usually communities fail within the first three years. Mm. Somewhere between three and five years, his failed too as well. Mm. Are you following me? And one reason why they, they fail so quick, because nobody wants to submit. Mm. And listen to those who have the experience, mm. to those who, who you can literally see the fruit. I can come from the top of this hill at this, this particular... What is that? What is that? Well, anyway, I can start from the top of this hill all the way down to the bottom of this hill, all right, and show you exactly the maturation of this particular community right here. And if people want to know how to do this community, what, what do you do? Do you go to somebody out there that has a bunch of opinions, the way they believe, they think that a community should be running or the way it should go? Or do you go to someone who has the experience? Do you go to someone who's been successful at doing this? Like I have for 26 years, just on this ground, been doing this for 30 years. You go to someone who know what they're talking about, you go to the experts. You know, if you're going, if you're going to have someone design you a house, all right? Are you going to go to someone uh, that's just still in architectural school and stuff and they're just learning this? Or do you want someone that's already done designed a few of them? And, and that way you can understand when you speak to him, he understand your language, where you're coming from, and he can put two and two together. Right, right. That's what we need. But again, the, the Hebrew community, just like with the nature of Israelites, is rebellion. And talk... Uh, speaking on rebellion, talk about because <clears throat> we saw a good example today. You see this guy going on here. He he. This guy is literally spending nine hours a day, wasting people's time, wasting his time, just literally giving them entertainment and hearsay and bearing false witness. And then today, you had a brother call you. Uh, Brother Judah Matt mm -hmm. about truly doing what the word says, coming out and actually setting foot, meeting in person, seeing firsthand what things are about, as opposed to just listening to a one-sided story. A lot of the stuff is made up. Can you speak on all that? Well, the book teaches by their fruits you should know them. Mm -hmm. And you're not, there's no, people are not producing much fruit out there, but making eight, nine, ten hour context. You can tell these people have no ambition and no aspirations whatsoever at all to even perform or even try to do this book. When they tell you that they're content creators, that's exactly what they are. Right. And that's all that they know. Yeah. So they're no expert. The only thing they can do is give you an opinion. Mm. They cannot give you substance. Mm. They can't concretely speak to you and tell you what it means. So actually get out of here, put your hand to the plow, and create a community. Does right. that make sense? Right. What was the second part of it you wanted me to answer? Uh, to talk about, you know, everybody... You see, everybody's making these videos about you, mm. uh, making these claims. Uh, he's an adulterer. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they break marriages up out there, this, that, and other. All, all, all this hearsay. And, and the reason we call it hearsay is because nobody's willing to do, again, the footwork mm -hmm. to, to see whether it be true or false. Can well, you speak on it? Well, first of all, I remain totally 100% unconcerned about the court of public opinion. Right. Which, if we had an opportunity and chance to peer into their lines, we'll see how <laughs> righteous that they are. Oh, wow. But nevertheless, again, you cannot argue with fruit. Uh, you understand what right. I mean? You, you just simply can't do it. People, you listen, I, even out there in the political arena, 
you've got the nation divided concerning Democrats and Republicans. You, you, you're right. always going to have that. And right. everything you do, there's going to be people that hate you. You've done nothing to them. They're going to hate you. There's going to be people that's going to slander you, accuse you, defame you, falsify information. You're not going to stop that. But what you have to do is remain focused in what you're doing. Remain focused at the task and making sure that you never lose sight of the vision and to continue to keep growing, to continue to keep um, producing, continue to keep manifesting the work of y'all. Because like I said, we just had a pastor leave here and, and, and um, the one thing I can ascertain the reason why that pastor left, left here after being with the place for 14 years is because I constantly kept giving direction to him about getting out front and leading by example. He, like a lot of these content creators, they believe leading by example is getting on a camera and bumping your gums or, or just just, just uh, walking around and pointing fingers and stuff. That's not leading by example. Leading by example is actually being out there in front of the people, leadership, so that people will be motivated by what they see that you do. Mm. And then you can be a teacher. And then when you uh, have a teachable spirit, then you can turn around and teach others. And so it, uh, over a period of time, this man had got to the point to where he actually said to the brethren down there, I don't have to do everything that Pastor Dow tell us to do. Now, if anybody know about these, these 12 or 13 communities we got, I very rarely give anybody any direction, any, fear, any interference. If I do that, it's because I see something that is lacking. Mm. If you've been down here for 14 years and you've done receive over a quarter million dollars and all that you can produce from that quarter million dollar, quarter million dollars that you received over that period of time is one multi-purpose building out of which we, we help build. The, the brethren here on this mm -hmm. land helped build, and uh, Straightway Kentucky helped build. Mm -hmm. um, I, there's There's been a gross abuse and a misappropriation of funds. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of things that has not been, you know, people, uh, they know how to get out there and speak to people in order to sway the, the court opinion, the court of public opinion. They all, you know, remember this, the people who accuse putting forth the finger, the way that these people are today is they pay attention to where the finger is pointing rather than the one that's pointing the finger. Mm. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Because you can't get him to show you in any way, shape, fashion, or form what he's been able to, to be capable of producing. And this has been one of the issues. And you're going to have trouble here straightway if you're going to be a leader in this. And I have to constantly stay on you. Mm. Constantly stay on your back because you're not doing like the other leaders are. And so sometimes they'll say, well, he just wants me to be a block mason. He wants me to do this. No, I want you to be what the vision is because if you're going to prosper, I mean, I've been on this man about getting land for, for 10 years, hmm. 10 years, and they still don't have no land whatsoever at all. And because when you get that land, you got to develop that land. And to develop their lands, guess what you got to do? Production. Work. Yep. You got to work. Footwork. Yep. And you got livestock. You got fencing to put up. You you got building to do. You got plumbing to do. You you got electric to do. You got wiring to do. You got management to do. You got livestock. You got to run and feed and raise. You got a lot of stuff that goes in. And guess what? You ain't got time to be running around playing intramural basketball. You don't have time to get on uh, basketball talk shows for four or five <laughs> nights a week, three four hours a, a day. You ain't got time for all that when you're doing this and so people get upset then they accuse me of having a spirit on me and next thing you know they go run to the very people that they have judged themselves it's hypocritical in, in a nutshell yeah but i always tell people all the time yes everybody that's ever been to any community has at least provided some benefit mm. but that doesn't mean that everybody's not going to have your day when you get corrected reproved rebuked hey everybody gets that but it just depends on what ground it falls on. And 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 we have to have a desire to 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 improve and and not stay like when you have a desire to grow and develop and get yourself right, you desire correction. You know, I always say something, I've always been saying this over the years, brother Michael. It's amazing that when you're in a leadership position, you want to tell everybody else what to do and you expect for them to obey you. But then you as a leader, when you're being told what to do, all of a sudden you're going to commit and, 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 and incite rebellion mm. and insurrection and, and, and then show people how rebellious that you are. But then, like I've always said before, I'm always right until I get to you. Mm. I'm always right until I get to you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, a man was one of my greatest cheerleaders in this. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, hey, he will go all over the place for far as speaking and talking to people and stuff. But when it came time to put your hand to the plow, do something, it ain't there. It just simply ain't there. And so we can't have those type of hypocritical leaders in the ministry, if you understand what I mean. Right, right. And it's going to come to pass one day, but um, I'm planning on 
doing this until the day I die. Mm. And then it's going to uh, go on for the rest of the Israelites. Mm. It really truly is. And now you got people out there that's trying to talk about land rights and land inheritance. I made a video about that. They don't comprehend what's going on. Right. When that when the Torah was written, we were free people. Mm -hmm. We wasn't under the Babylonian or the Egyptian right. or any other captivity and stuff. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you know, you couldn't move your brother's landmark or something mm -hmm. like that because we had laws for that. Mm -hmm. Now we're in captivity and nobody wants to talk about that. They don't want to talk about that we're in exile to y'all and we're separated. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, because if we were not in captivity, then we could implement our own police force, our own laws, statutes, and commandments that we would actually, uh, we've gotten from the Most High Yah, and we could use our own system of law. You right. understand what I mean? Right. But we can't do that because we're in captivity. Right. It's the same way with land. Don't tell me that you that you are, are out here and you um trying to live the way that the uh, Most High commanded us to live and want us to live in Torah when they were, they were free people when the laws was given. Now we're over here under Roman occupation and you think you're going to still do the same thing? Well, do that and don't pay taxes then on that land. Right, right. Huh? I'm, I'm not 501c3. Mm -hmm. and, and, and right now I have this land of just about 95% tax exempt. Mm -hmm. Just about 95%. And I'm going to get that other five too. Right. Are you following me? And so long after I'm gone, the land still belongs to the Israelites. And, and, and that... The key takeaway for a lot of y'all is uh, when, cause y'all, it seemed like y'all real good at listening, but real bad and blind at seeing fruit and mindset. When you look at these people, they're making eight, nine hour videos, wasting your time, wasting their time. And it's, it's there's no benefit in it for you. You see what I'm saying? Then you see someone where he, he has he has the proof you can see the fruit he has a system and but you got people they just want to run with what feels good and sounds good to them but they don't a lot of y'all y'all don't actually want to do the true work the due diligence that it takes to really see what's true and what's not you know hey, what I'm like i said but all the people out there that claim to be in the Hebrew community, I would love to put them all, see them all in a room to try to figure out how to do what we produced. I really would. So uh, this summer, we've got Judah Mack coming down to visit the community, and we also have Zion Lex oh, that's wow. going to be coming down uh, to visit the community. And uh, they're going to give you their own eyewitness testimony, unlike these false witnesses. Mm. They're going to give you an eyewitness right. testimony. You know what I mean? These people out here, um, they're so concerned about somebody else committing sin, but they're not concerned about them bearing false witness, which mm. James says you offend in one point, you're guilty in them all. You're sinning all over the place. So he's uh, condemning somebody, but then you condemn yourself. You're doing the very same thing. And, and people are so blind because, again, they're just listening. You're not actually looking, Okay. So what, we, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go down the hill and we're gonna continue this video a little bit more. Well, all we're right? jumping my pickup. What you're looking at, this is the, the newer, one of the newer parts of the land. This piece up here. Um, Pastor was actually buying this part of the land when, uh, when I first became a part of Straightway. That was probably four or five uh, years ago. And then he also bought that. Um, there was a small building right there, but all this other stuff you see has been built. So that they built that building, they built that building, they built that one down there, they redid those houses. They built a little pump house next to that. They redid that house, it has a new deck on it. One of the other communities, they have a business that builds decks. So they put a deck on that building for them. And that's how we're moving. We're functioning um, as a nation. You know what I'm saying? And uh, one, of the, one of the main things that, um, one of the main things that you, uh, that, that I keep saying is like out here, on, in our assembly out here, everything's peaceful. There ain't no contention, ain't no argument. Everybody wants to be out here. It's enjoyable out here. It's peaceful. It's peaceful at our house. All that silliness is going on online. It's all manufactured, you know? So, all right. So, yeah, so like I said, this part of the land we're on now, are you, you said, Robert, um, Pass was buying it 
right when I, I came in. So look at all the stuff that's been built on here. They built that, they built that building back there, this building here, so they, they built those buildings. Um, they built this building over here, mm -hmm. and that's us working on the van. They, they built, built the, that building. And the building next Storage. to it, storage building, okay? You know, this whole tabernacle was built by by hand, okay? By the hands of the saints, okay? And then wait through there and the building over there, okay? So, again, fruit, a lot of fruit going on. Um, you know, th this is step one in evaluating who you're gonna further investigate and research and discern who who's who's the real and and who's the fake all right so, still here with pastor and where we're at now is in front of his old or first mm -hmm. uh home on this land how how long did you live in this roughly probably about uh, nine years nine years so what you're gonna see and I, the reason i'm doing this is because these naysayers and these liars online, they're like, oh, Pastor fleecing the flock and he's taking advantage of people and this, that, and the other. And I want to show you the humble beginnings. And again, I'm not just talking. We're standing right here in front of it. And we got him right here. So, Pastor, if you can, while I, while I walk around here, just talk about this trailer a little bit and, uh, you know, well, this trailer right here, I think I paid two hundred dollars for it. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars for the trailer. It actually cost me more to actually move the trailer than it did to actually pay for it. And uh, this whole time, I didn't have a lot of building experience and stuff. Now it's just an old storage trailer. Uh, the back was out of it, and of course, all the thing I did was just put plastic over it because uh, we had a wood stove and stuff. And this is where I actually um, uh, my children grew up in. They grew up in this place. And uh, this trailer was right over there. It wasn't parked right here, but it was right over there. And, and um, that's how much I paid for it. $200, it didn't have any running water um, and in here. It didn't have uh, a kitchen in this place at all because we, we eat common unity over in the dining hall. And, and so this is how we pretty much live. We heated it by wood stoves. Um, it didn't have, a matter of fact, we lived out here uh, for the first nine years with no air conditioning either. So we just had box fans. Um, because every single nickel and penny and dime that we um, put, uh, in, you know, instead of putting it into conveniences like that, we will put it into the maturation and the building of this community. Mm. By going by and building materials and trying to get uh, stable homes, you know, homes up under people. But we had to start somewhere, if you know what I mean. Right. So, so just getting a good, just getting a good look at this, but. This is what you got to, when, when you hear these people on here making these accusations, calling him a king, um, talk, tell, tell the story about uh, your bathtub. Oh, okay. Well, okay, so Mother Carol wanted a bathtub, and we didn't have any bathtubs. didn't have no running water in this place. And uh, so one day I was coming home, um, and I actually um, drove by a place, and I seen a bathtub on the side of the road. All right, just basically on the side of the road, out front. Kind of like one of these people having yard sales or something like that, and he was headed out there. And so I just picked up the thing, picked up the thing, and brought it in here. And I told Mother Carrie, "Here's your bathtub." Now, mind you, when we first started this community. We were laughing the stock of everybody. They called us a cult and everything else. And of course, they still do that today. You know what I mean? But, but. Um, they said, look at them, they out there peeing in buckets and, and, and look, they live in deplorable conditions, which I would agree with them. We're kind of living like the Amish in the Mennonite was, you know what I mean? And so I took the bathtub, drilled a hole in the floor, uh, ran a line out because it's just gray water. Mm -hmm. And then she would go to this creek right back here, what you see, and she would get two five-gallon buckets of water and she would uh, fill up that tub with that and that's how she would take a bath. And so that's how the bath uh, tub started. But I always told the people, I said, listen, uh, there are going to be people that's laughing, mocking, deriding, deriding and chiding us, but it ain't going to be always be funny. We're going to end up with the laugh, la last laugh because before I get done with everything, everybody, these trailers are going to be null and ill. There's going to be homes out here and not just trailers, just it's going to be homes. 
and right and now, now and, it, and it's so funny that that now instead of them saying they're living in deplorable conditions they they call you king now king <laughs> because you you building a house up here but these people and it, and then i heard the comment oh he got some of them people living in houses and they don't even have uh oh uh, uh, bathtubs or whatever uh, uh toilets in them or running water or anything mm -hmm. but he's not doing anything this isn't anything he did not do yeah first he, he's first done it and he and he did it on a on a very on a, on a lot harder level in order to uh what i say forge this community forge this model out for the rest of you know you know it's amazing the one who started that king dow stuff is rufus right mm. rufus started that um and when he first came here i can show you a testimony said that that um he'll never be leaving these people right here because y'all send him here right yeah. but he started this king dow stuff because over the spirit you know period of time the spirit started getting on him but you know what's amazing is that uh when they were getting uh, kicked out of the place that they were renting all right it was this ministry here straightway um that actually well, I only had sixty thousand dollars. I took sixty. I took fifty-five of that sixty thousand dollars to provide a place for him and his family. Wow. He's never lived like this. Wow. Never lived like this. And, and and let me. How were you able to save up that sixty thousand by living like this, right? Well, we work. <laughs> we are working. I, I had to work. I was working and saving. Build custom cabinets. Um, uh, saving money, brothers of God would uh, work on jobs and stuff, and then they would bring money in. And this what this what happens. It's kind of like compound interest, if you know what I mean. When you take your resources, you put them together, and then they manage extremely well. If they are managed extremely well, you can do a whole lot with a little. Mm. A whole lot, and then you don't have all the waste that you know people normally would have. Especially when you know, for me, I'm not I'm not taking the saints' money and got two or three closets full of Jordan. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not going out. And uh, I, 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 see that pickup truck right here? We had a couple of pickup trucks. These, these used to be my trucks. Trucks like this, mm -hmm. right here. You know, we had old trucks and stuff, and we would do things. I would actually wear bib overalls. You know what I mean? You would what? Wear bib overalls. Oh, okay. You know, coveralls. Yeah. yeah. Country stuff. Um, because uh, again, we will work from sun up to sun down every day. When the Sabbath came, you better believe. We understood what it was meaning to rest. Right. It was a blessing. So trucks like this used to be our trucks and everything. And so and, and you have to understand, when you can take your money and take it from the world, and I've been teaching this and living this for 30 years now, Brother Mike, the whole idea is, is you get brothers that have businesses and brothers that can go out and work, and I include myself, and then we bring the, the money into the pot. We want to be able to take our dollars and circulate it in our community. We don't want to get it in our hand, and the first thing we do is send it out there. That's how I'm able to help other communities. Right. Because um, whatever money we're compounding, whatever we're, we're building up, if we're not doing a major building project at that time, I can take that money and then help that community be developed, right. if you understand what I mean. That's what really common unity is. And if Rufus and them was really honest and telling the truth, which you don't have to worry about that. You can go back in the archives, look at these videos and speak for yourself. You can see me all the way down in Georgia, help building up that place. Mm. And you understand what I mean? I'm talking about physically boots on the ground. And guess what? I've done work, more work down there than in, in, um, in, the, in the times that I've been down there than the whole time he lived there for 14 mm. years. Mm. And this is not disparaging him in any kind of way because everybody knows that I'm speaking nothing but facts, nothing but truth. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? But uh, that's how th that the vision of this is supposed to be. We're supposed to be here to be helpers one to another. Mm -hmm. That's what it's supposed to be. But, uh, you know, I don't understand why people have to falsify information, lie, slander. But, hey, like I said, the proof is in the pudding. This is the way I used to live. Yeah. So there it is, y'all. So, you know, and you heard you heard him on the top of the hill on how long it's been. And he, he's labored, um, sacrificed, and everything like that. Hey, but watch this. Uh-huh. So, you know, I made a statement some time ago, and I'm on this a little bit right here because I'm actually a perturbed uh, about the false information, the lies, and the accusations, and the slanders that's been taking place. Um, Pastor Rufus has the same amount of Isha's that I do. Same amount of Isha's I do. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. And I said this, and this is, this is how you can tell the acid test of proof. I can take just me and my Isha's who don't know nothing about building, and I can take them and I can build a house with just me and them, nobody else helping. 
and get it done in one summer. Mm. I guarantee you he can't make that claim, and I guarantee he can't do it with him and his family. I promise you that. And 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 this is this is where again it it comes back to you. Again, you see some of these videos these people have made trying to talk about doing community. Y'all, if y'all following these people, you going down the wrong path because they don't have the fruit. And you could already see by uh, a lot of their actions that they don't have what it takes to make and run a successful community. This is our diamond hall right here. That actually one time, to, um, when I actually laid pretty much almost every single block on this building. Almost every single block I did. I can remember showing you that even my son, Chuck, he's like, um, he's gonna be 37 years old this year when he was little. He was out here up with me. There was times where there was nobody but just him and I out here building this building. Right. And so I, then I had the brother helping too, and we extended out the roof. But this is a, a, a huge dining hall. It has multiple, it has two sections in the back. Storage room, um, the kitchen area in itself, and then the place where we eat at twice a day. Mm. All right. So go ahead, go ahead, Pastor. Well, here's a particular trailer right here that I actually spent $4,000 on uh, probably about 25 years ago. And we moved two sisters, two single sisters into this trailer right here. At least one sister, she had children at the time. And we split it in half and made a duplex out of it. Now it's just nothing but a storage unit. But as you can see, trailers over a period of time become dilapidated. Right. They just don't last in, in like a home does, something that is really truly built by you know your hands because they're mostly stamped and stuff. So hopefully this year we get to it, uh, we're actually gonna uh, take this down and then build a home in this spot right here as well. We have another spot up here we need to be working on as well. So, so real fast, talk about the process because again, it's been accused of you falsely because what I see here, that everybody's in trailers and everything. Talk talk about how this uh, community has matured and how there were trails. Because I remember y'all tore a trailer down right there. Right, we sure did. And as you see right there, there's a duplex building there. You have uh, bungalows. newly built bungalows, three of them there that people stay in. You know, you, you see all the buildings, but uh, talk about the process of, of that if you can, Pastor. Well, you know, I don't have um, unlimited resources and funds. As a matter of fact, we live extremely poor. Um, and again, uh, since I didn't have much money coming in, we had to make do with what we had. And as we began to, uh, you know, the business start to flourish a little more, um, the brother start bringing in more money, as I become more well known and then some people want to contribute to the work and give offerings, um, it was, uh, again, I'm able to take this money and rather than just put it in my back pocket, I'm able to take it and, and buy building materials in order to build places like this. I actually got the idea of these bungalows right here when I went to Canada to visit the community up there. Uh, I actually got in, I, was, I took a couple of little measurements and I said, you know what, I need to build three of them and I'm going to actually um, hopefully before the next two or three years, I'm hopefully going hopefully to have six more of these built at the top of the hill. Nice. Uh, because right now, uh, that was a small schoolhouse, and we have uh, two sisters that live uh, in these particular places right here. And and they're extremely nice inside. They have a, their own kitchenette in there. They have their own bathroom with a shower inside those places. Oh, wow. A toilet in there. Um, and of course, they have like a, a, a living room slash bedroom, which is kind of like what they call studio apartments, do stuff right, like that. Right, right. Um, but they're living extremely, extremely well. And over here, we have a fourplex where we have a, a one of the older sisters that here, and Teacher Shane, he lives on the other side, and he's getting ready to get married. And so this is a fourplex which we build ourselves as well. And so we have two places occupied, and we got most of the storage at the top there. I'm gonna get a couple more shipping containers, move all that stuff out, and we're gonna start working on this to get this prepared for a family to live as well. All right. And then if we go down there further, we're going to see that there's, uh, across from Pat's house, there's more build, uh, buildings there. Yeah, more homes. More homes. But again, like Pastor said, they built this by hand. And it's just, it's just amazing to listen to the, the stuff that these naysayers imagine. <laughs> and, you know, 
how I, I've, I've watched them how quickly they'll just come up with something the way they think things are or assume mm-hmm. the way they assume things are but uh, the reality couldn't be further from the truth and again you see my boots or my shoes and they right here on the ground boots on the ground okay I'm not I, I'm not sitting behind a desk uh, with monitors behind me with half naked women on them for nine hours talking I'm out here walking all right all right okay so this place right here is our shop um, out of which I'm probably going to end up turning this into the new schoolhouse the school building and the reason being because we have um, a shop four times its size that we built up there at the top of the hill right um, and we of course we built it with our hands too as well um, so I'm probably gonna make this the, the new school building the straight way and um, so that's the shop because we have our chicken coop over there you can see a girl over there uh, watering the chickens and getting ready to gather the eggs or either the sisters have already done it taking care of them the goats the milk goats over here we got a couple of greenhouses blackberries and then multiple tools of beds which the sisters planted this morning uh, that has cabbage uh, collards kale and uh, broccoli uh, inside those beds right there and and let's speak on this real quick um the sisters here at straightway aren't out there working for master charlie out there in the world getting you know whatever talk about what 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 the sisters here how how this works well first of all the sisters have their own common unity here Uh, we don't believe in our sisters going out there and submitting to another man and being under another man's authority be it at a job or whatever it is the book teaches that a sister should be a chase keeper at home so they're literally at home Uh, like we are able to fulfill the scriptures and it went from house to house breaking bread and in prayers um, because they had favor with God and that's the way our sisters are here to actually uh, maintain and do the gardens, uh, they do the cooking, they do the cleaning, uh, they do the schooling of the children, homeschooling the children, and all of that. They have so much fun with recreation. They're out here with the children, they go on field trips with the uh, to the children and everything. But the brethren, we the ones that build the buildings. We the ones that do the heavy lifting and stuff because they're not designed for that. They have a particular job that they were designed to do and we have a particular job that we're designed to do. Um, and, and a lot of times you'll get men make excuses for not doing this because there's really something wrong in them. There's, there's something going on. I believe that there's got to be some type of feminization that's in them that don't want to actually function as a man because a man should always be creating himself. A man should always be learning and never stop learning. Never stop learning. And okay, so as we go on here, you got heavy equipment here. This is the home right here. Again, I did the foundation work with the brothers. I actually used this home to teach some other brothers how to do foundations. And this is a, a, actually a home that has like a three or four bedroom on this side and a two bedroom on this side. Mm. And so it's actually split too. And again, you have to understand this. When we build homes, nobody here pays any rent. Nobody here, nobody here, nobody here um, has a mortgage. And somebody said, well, they give all. Well, 90, Five percent of the people that live on this land don't bring in any income. Uh oh. Wait, 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 wait. Say that again. Ninety-five percent of the people that live on this land don't bring in any income. They're actually working here on their own home. So, 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 all, all you little ringites, like, like, uh, it's like an uh, infection of ringites. All y'all need to take that little piece of information back to him. And, uh, you know, that, that's do, interesting. I don't care what they think out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. Totally wrong. Greenhouses. And then, of course, this is a freezer building. That's another home. We built right there. Right here. Built this home. And, then, of course, there's my home right there that I'm living in now. That used to be. And we're going we're gonna to walk over there right now. Okay. Go ahead, Pat. That used to be the uh, gym and the fellowship hall. Uh, when I was living in that trailer down there for nine years, because after I got everybody settled in the home, they told me I need to build my own home. And so what we decided to do, because we had built a gym at the top of the hill, um, is we're going to turn this into a home. Now, I realized that if I'm going to turn this into a home, guess who's going to have to frame the house? Myself and Hilda Doug. Guess who's going to have to do the roof and build it? Myself and Hilda Doug. You understand what I mean? So that's home. Um, I laid every single block, just about, I, I promise I laid 99% of the blocks on this building right here. 
And this building has been standing firm and tall. Um, I'm getting ready to move out of this home to give it to another family out of which they came from California. When they came here, it was just two of them. Well, now I think it's six of them because they have children now. So I'm, we're going to remodel this home. Uh, I got to replace a lot of the wood that over a period of time because they don't make it the way they used to. I got to replace a lot of this wood, redo the stopping and stuff like this and get the roof done. And before they move in here, it's going to be like a brand new home again. So uh, how, how long did have, did have you lived in this home? I probably lived in this home maybe, oh, you know, I'm good, not good with time. Let's, let's say maybe 12 years. Okay, that all, Something it like all lines that. up. Yeah, that makes oh, well. sense. Let me ask Mother, hey, Mother Carol, how long have we lived in this home right here? Round about, yeah. 2007. So 2007 up till now. Oh, 17 years. Wow. So I was off two years. Okay. Yeah. So that's how long I lived in this home. And this home is going to become, the, uh, now not only does uh, uh, the family gets this home, but they, the family that moves here, they get this garage as well. And, and it, it, it'd be an understatement to say your family has increased in size a little bit since then. My family personally has increased exponentially since then. All right. Because uh, you know, I got two little ones. Uh, um, there and of course my Isha's. Right. Um, and of course, and all they we don't they don't all live in these, these homes right here because they all have their own dwelling places that they live in. All right. Um, out of which I built <laughs> myself and a brother built again. If you understand me, Mother Carol's business, Carol L. She just went in and she was to at this um, multi-purpose building right here, the white door right there. This way. Let's go over here for a second. See, for those of you who order products, because every time she goes somewhere. People always stopping her and ask her, excuse me, somebody smells good over here. <laughs> so this is uh, <laughs> Mother Carol's business over here. Carol L, and she don't ever want me to get online and, and make <laughs> and make a video about her product or something. This is where she runs her business at. It's just a real big mess in here today. I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> that means that means business is good. <laughs> See Carol L right now. Mm -hmm. And, and mind you, Mother Carol, her business does extremely well itself, and this is just another way to be able to bring in income. Mm. Hallelujah. Okay, y'all, so, um, you know, I did a good interview with Pastor, and as you know, I was running around, but um, as you see with the van, Brother Martez, the, I can't call him an aspiring mechanic anymore because he, he was in here really getting after it mechanically. And he's pulled, as, as you see, he's pulled a lot of the components off the engine. We have our mount here uh, to put the engine mount, um, you know, the engine removal lift, the engine lift in there. So I, I suspect next time we come up here, uh, our next visit, we'll be pulling that engine out of this van. And it really uh, wasn't too difficult. He's gotten a lot of work done, even with me being here. But I was helping him with it. And, you know, I was running, doing up, checking up on the brothers, on the other two crews over there at the house. Um, and I was interviewing, doing that interview with Pastor. And in doing that, he was able to carry the load. And this is a young brother. So, this, this is the type of mindset. These are the type of brothers you want to be dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Um, brothers who could carry the load, you know? So he did a good job. Um, Brother Terrence was over there working with Brother Tony and them, wiring up the house. He, he's been learning a bunch. Um, he, uh, but he came, he, he came over here to help clean up because we're getting ready to go do some training. Okay, and y'all will get to see, uh, you know, observe the training that we're getting ready to go do. Um, what else? Uh, I think that's it for now. We're going to head on over here to the house, and I'm going to get the other brothers to start cleaning up and everything. All right, All right so we're down here, and uh, you have to come in real close. Yeah, so anyway, we're down here. Been training the brothers here on uh, on these platforms on how to basically giving them a, a basic introduction. Um, you know, shooting 
some shotgun shells, stuff like that. Uh, AR-15. One of the brothers just got a jackal. We just test fired a little. But just giving them a basic familiarization of how to operate these weapons. So, with that said, we're gonna continue with the training. Who's next? Uh, safety's on. Yeah, just lock that slide back. So, and again, we just test firing it. We don't, uh, the iron sights are on order. The optics and all that stuff is on order. But the brothers are just, you know, this is uh, the brothers' first jackal, so they're getting uh, used to it. <laughs> 